we're gonna really quickly introduce all the concepts related to linear algebra that are part of the NumPy pretty much core of the library, right? We know already that NumPy is all about arrays and we also saw that an array can have multiple dimensions, which let us basically create matrices. This is gonna be fundamental, as we said in our previous lessons, to the, uh, to the explosion of data science popularity within the Python universe, because everything you're gonna see from, from now on, all the important data science computations, including machine learning, for example, and, and neural networks and deep learning, it all uses uh, matrices and matrix multiplication, and actually also high level structures like multidimensional tensors with more even more dimensions. So uh, again, it's gonna be very important. This might not apply directly to you. Maybe you don't need linear algebra right now, but uh, it's, it can be a good introduction if you are into scientific or mathematic uh, computing. So we're gonna use these examples, the matrices A and B and the vector V, and we're gonna do a couple of different operations. We are gonna just, again, we're gonna see them uh, in a high level perspective. You can fork this lesson and play it with your own. There are also some exercises for you to practice as usual. So the basics, just doing regular ar arithmetic operations with uh, NumPy and with matrices and vectors is very simple, like adding them or just subtraction of mat matrices or multiplication of multiple matrices. In this case, as usual, you, you always have to understand what type of multiplication you're making with uh, matrices. It's not the same thing to do a element-wise uh, multiplication, like in, these, in this way, it's also the Hadamard product, than doing, for example, matrix multiplication, which in this case we just sometimes call dot, the dot product. And actually starting in Python 3.5, we had the at operator that also serves as a built-in matrix multipli multiplication operator. Transposing, transposing matrices is also very simple. We're gonna see a couple of examples where we might need these later. Um, what about all those operations to operate? If you are, again, in, in this scientific space and you need the usage of more advanced mathematical concepts with linear algebra, it's gonna be very simple to get that going with a NumPy. So for example, creating an identity matrix is extremely simple. An identity matrix just defines this matrix that has the diagonal, right, containing number ones and the rest, uh, it's all zeros. Um, so again, ver fairly simple. You're just gonna say the indicate the order of the identity matrix and it's gonna generate it for you. In this case, we're creating another matrix that is just, we're creating, this is a very sim interesting operation. We use it from time to time, the reshape one. What we're doing is creating a regular NumPy array and then we are reshaping it, we're changing its shape, right? And we're doing it, we're making it into a three by three matrix. So one, two, three becomes the first row and four, five, six becomes the second row and the rest, of course, the third row of it. So um, you might know already the properties of an identity matrix, right? Um, it just pretty much will not change the, the, the original matrix when you are doing multiplication. What about the inverse of a matrix? This is pretty interesting. We have a couple of formulas here if you wanna follow them up. Um, we're gonna start first with a matrix, which is one, two, three, four. To get the inverse of a matrix, you need to first get the determinant of the matrix. What you're gonna find out um, right here, the determinant is gonna be divided by, uh, one divided the determinant. The problem is that sometimes the, the, the determinant of a matrix will not be defined. In that case, it's when uh, we say that the matrix is singular. In this case, one, two, three, four, it does have a determinant, minus two, so we can actually get an inverse. So if you check this formula, this all adds up, but the inverse of the matrix, one, two, three, four, is actually minus two, one, 1.5, minus 0 0.5. But again, if we have a singular matrix, like in this case, this is angular matrix, one, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, we check that the, that the determinant is actually zero. If you plug zero into this formula, of course, that's something you cannot compute, compute. you cannot divide by zero. So that means that this is a singular matrix, again, and if you try to get the inverse of it, 
you're gonna get an error because it actually tells you that the matrix you're trying to use is a singular matrix. And another property of the um, inverse of a matrix is that a matrix multiplied by its inverse, the result will be the identity matrix. Here we have some rounding to do. This is again numeric computing. We're using floats, so it's approximate. If you use the round method, you're gonna see that it approximates very uh, in, in, um, it approximates to the in the identity matrix. So to wrap it up, and again, this is a, a lecture you can pretty much fork and work on your own if you are interested in these concepts. Is a couple of functions we use all the time: a range, for example, to create ranges. This is similar to the range function in Python. The big difference is first it returns a NumPy array. Uh, the range function in Python, especially Python 3, is going to return uh, a generator, right? So range 5 doesn't actually produce numbers. It creates a generator. You have to, to pull those numbers in order to get them. So it generates the version of NumPy, generates an array first. And second, it has like uh, these um, decimal steps. So you can have like a little bit more of control of what you want to generate. In this case, from 0 to 1 with 0.1 steps. This is pretty neat. A couple of other functions might be interesting. Linear space. This is something that personally I've used a lot. Some from from time to time I use it. It's it's a very interesting function. It lets you divide right a, a range of numbers into multiple um, numbers. Right. So you say from zero to one from this interval, I want to split it into five different parts, and you get uh, the points right where to split them. And it's very interesting what you can generate. Um, there is this final, this final parameter that will basically tell you if you will be including the, the rightmost limit or not, basically. So the, in this case, we're using the same parameters, the interval one, 0 to 1 split into 20 different steps. And the, this example, you're going to see that, for example, doesn't include 1. And of course, this is the opposite. Something else to check out are the functions zeros, ones, and empty. Zeros is going to generate, as it says, a matrix or an array actually with zeros. In this case, we're generating a matrix. And you can, of course, specify the type that you're trying to use. Ones is similar. It's going to generate a matrix with ones. And this is pretty interesting. The empty one is going to generate empty, empty matrices. But these don't look empty. What is actually happening is that NumPy is pretty much picking any free space of memory to use. The problem is that in this case, the memory was already had some garbage in it and it's pretty much being reused. So NumPy says, you know, you have a matrix here or an array. Actually, you have this array. You can use it with whatever you want. But uh, it's not clearing, clearing it. You're, if you are looking for to get something empty like like zeros, right? You will have to use the zeros function. So in this case, again, NumPy is reusing free memory. The memory had already something allocated, so it's generating uh, these numbers right here. Full is going to be pretty much. We're going to use a couple of different uh, functions here. Full is going to uh, it's going to have a um, a matrix which has or, or an array which has these dimensions and you can specify what value to use to, to fill it, right? So if I do something like here, we're going to do three by three with number ones, it's of course pretty much the same thing as doing the ones function, right? It's just uh, ones is pretty much a synonym uh, or, or a, simple, a simple shortcut of the full method. Again, identity, anime matrix, all things for you to check out. These are the basics of linear algebra. There are a couple of exercises for you to use and to do if you think it's gonna, you're going to be benefited of the linear algebra of capabilities of NumPy. This is not required if you're, doing, if you're starting with data science. Data science doesn't have a lot of linear algebra contrary to the, to the usual reasoning that we do linear algebra all the time. That is not truth. So again, if you're interested, go ahead with the exercises. In other case, if you will not be using this, don't worry. You will probably not need it anytime soon.